Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible and you guys know that I'm not just saying that or whatever you happen to be watching. We have a lot going on today. Gonna to be doing some cage stuff, gonna work on ball pythons, but we're gonna get the day started with something cool. Believe it or not, Jay yesterday found that Drogo loves getting combed. He actually enjoys it. So what do you say we get Drogo out, give him a little brushing? I mean, that's a great way to start the day, right? Yeah, push our problem aside. Let's go get Drogo. Okay, we've got my little guy Drogo out and like I said, Jay, you said yesterday he was just laying on the bed and you were yeah, like- Yeah, just like face down, I was just brushing him. <laughs> and he just seemed to love it, right? He so, you know, it. we're always trying to find things that will enrich his life as well, right? So we wanna make sure he's happy too. So we're just gonna go ahead and see if he likes a little brushing when he's out. So go ahead and, there you go. And immediately look at him, he seems to love it. He immediately kind of goes back and, <laughs> that's so funny. It is so crazy to have a sloth. There's no doubt about it. It is unbelievable. And by the way, there's some news coming hopefully pretty soon about uh, being able to display this little dude. Uh, again, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but if everything goes well, it won't be too long before people can come to the Reptarium and actually see this guy just like we have going on right now. He is absolutely wonderful. And again, he. Drogo, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> and of course, you could see he loves getting brushed. I mean, and it's really probably pretty good for him too, you know, just to keep that hair going. We're gonna try to give him a bath here pretty soon. Again, we have a better idea of the bath this time. We're thinking we're gonna make a little apparatus so that he can actually hang on it and we can actually just bathe him with him hanging on that apparatus. So we have a pretty good idea. So that'll happen in the next week or so because he's getting a little bit stinky right now. Not too bad, but just a little bit. But I think that Drogo is definitely <laughs> loving a little bit of a brushing. What an absolute ripper this guy is. I mean, he is so unbelievable adorable. Again, in my life, I never thought I would actually own a sloth. And again, I just think it's absolutely amazing to have this little dude. I mean, he is so cute. So now he's got his little grooming for the day. It's a good way to start the day off, right? <laughs> just groom your sloth. I mean, good job, Jay. And uh, and again, Jay works with Drogo every single day, keeping him so cool and awesome and stuff like that. So we love him. What do you say we go put Drogo back? He'll take a little nap for the afternoon and, uh, and then he'll be ready to wake up tonight. Right, Drogo? Good, Drogo. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Bye-bye. And it is crazy how agile these things are. I mean, within a second, he's just like totally pulling himself up. <laughs> I can honestly say, guys, that sloths are much more bizarre than I ever expected them to be. That's for sure. I mean, what are you doing? What's the matter, silly monkey? Are you upset now? Are you upset now? I think he wants more brushes. Do you want more brushes? I think he does actually. He's like, why does that happen? <laughs> we'll give him a little brush inside here. And this is where he probably feels a little more comfortable too, to be totally honest with you. You know, hanging on to me, it's probably not a branch, right? You know, he's doing the best he can, but I think right here is where he's doing the best. And again, it's just so bizarre. These things are the most unusual animal. And before we owned a sloth, I had seen a lot of sloths, interacted with a lot of sloths, but I'm telling you what, these animals are bizarre. I mean, they are so cool, but look at how unbelievably, insanely cool that thing is. I love Drogo so much, and I cannot wait until people can actually get and interact with him. I mean, it's gonna be absolutely incredible. I told you guys the other day that the green tree pythons were locked up. Well, guess what, guys? Right now, their tails are locked. You can see it's actually a complete lock right now. Of course, Pickles is on the bottom. Gherkin is up on top. That is the second confirmed lock. Of course, they could have bred oftentimes when we weren't watching, but this is the second morning that I've come in and actually seen them locked up. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Again, hopefully she'll start to produce follicles. She ate really good the other day. And then hopefully here in the next, you know, say month and a half, two months, she'll obviously, could you imagine getting a clutch from pickles? I mean, I've had pickles for so long, never even thought about breeding her until this year. The male's only been in for really a short period of time and already they're breeding. I mean, that would be so amazing. I produced green tree pythons when I was like 19 or 20 years old and I did it for a handful of seasons and then I haven't since. So it's been a lot of years since I even tried to breed green tree pythons. So pretty and these guys would definitely be one of the highlights of the year for me. I cannot believe it, they're hooked up. That is absolutely incredible. Attila's on the run again. 
just kind of chilling out. I love this tortoise. I mean, she is so amazing. And like I said, uh, I didn't put a lock on the door because to be honest with you, she only comes out in the daytime. So she doesn't come out at night. She's always sleeping at night. So she doesn't destroy, you know, she's not destroying the place or anything like that. And I think it's kind of cool that she can just kind of push her way out, kind of walk around and enjoy the zoo. She deserves exercise. She's a big tortoise and she likes to cruise around and she, she's so furious, you know. I love it. So every day we come in, usually, uh, you know, about noon or something like that, she'll just kind of push her way out. She'll spend maybe an hour or two walking around the entire zoo. Uh, sometimes we'll give her some treats and stuff like that. And then ultimately she goes right back in on her own. We never have to put her back or anything like that. So it's actually pretty cool. And here she comes. There you go, baby. Don't step on my feet. Here you go, baby. Such a cool tortoise. I mentioned last week that we were actually starting to redo a bunch of the enclosures, just making them look better, going back and kind of getting things going and stuff like that. So Bella's cage is up now, and I'll be honest with you, she's a, she freaks out when you do even the smallest amount of change. So Jessica's gonna go in there, try not to bother Bella. Hopefully she's looking, she's already eyeballing me, like, what are you thinking, Dad? I don't know what you're thinking. But we're gonna try to spruce up this cage and hopefully Bella will love it. And of course, my girl's Bella cage looks absolutely amazing. Jessica did a really good job. And it doesn't seem like Bella's stressed out at all about it, which is really good. She's up here, she's getting pets. She seems to be really calm. Uh, it's cool, I can't wait to see how she kind of interacts with it and how she looks. I mean, when she's up there where she normally does in her basking spot, just to have that more color pop is gonna make her look absolutely wonderful. And again, I'm just really happy that she isn't stressed out about it. Cause like I said, sometimes even just little things like moving her water dish around will freak her out like you can't believe. So it's really good that she seems to be settled in. Her cage looks great. Uh, and again, those little bit of pops of color and those just little things make the whole place just look better and better. Like I said, we're slowly going around and doing it to the entire zoo. I can't wait to see how this place looks in the next six weeks or so when we're done kind of sprucing everything up. And I know my girl Belle is happy, right girl? I love you, baby girl. I always talk about the cycles of breeding when it comes to snakes, right? And right now we're in that crucial stage I told you about, but we actually have a handful of males that just haven't bred. Now some of those males actually bred last year and for whatever reason just haven't bred and it's been about six or seven weeks now. It's pretty important to make sure that males are breeding females at this time. You can see like some animals are breeding really well. Every single one has breeding and then we get into other lines here where all, an entire group has not been bred like this banana fire pin bred last year, just hasn't bred one time this year. So now we're at that stage where we have to start making decisions that I prefer not to make. I want that male to breed those females, but I need a male to breed, period. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, we probably have four or five males that just haven't bred yet this year. We're gonna go ahead and hit that backup male, the one that is the secondary male that we didn't want to necessarily be the one that we're breeding, but we have no choice because we'd rather get breeding than have those females not produce. Because if they don't get copulation here within the next probably two or three weeks, there's a chance they may not grow follicles and they may not produce this year. So that's my job for today is to kind of decipher which males I want to put in with which females uh, starting this next breeding cycle.
So again, it's just about kind of matching up males that make sense with the males that aren't breeding. This actual super striped spider right here just has done nothing. Last year he bred a few animals, this year he's done nothing. So I definitely want to get it into something with yellow belly because of course that is a spider, it's a specter and it's a yellow belly. So a lot of the animals that I'm breeding it to are specters and yellow bellies so I can produce some super striped stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it with this animal here which is a dragonfly yellow belly which is a pastel, it's a fire, it's a pinstripe and it's a yellow belly. So it actually has more genes than the spider super stripe. So I think it'll be a good kind of uh, replacement. We'll see if this guy starts breeding. And then later in the season, we may throw the spider super stripe back in a couple times too. That's where we might get some dual father clutches. But right now, this male will replace that male for the next couple weeks. like I mentioned earlier, this actual banana fire pin right here just hasn't been breeding. Now these males I'm replacing are two-year-old animals, but they are a little bit smaller, so I'm hoping that they'll breed. This is actually a beautiful pastel vanilla bamboo woma. So if this guy will breed, it'll be a really good switch up for sure. As a matter of fact, I wanted to breed him earlier and he was just a little bit too small. He's put some weight on now. Now he's at that 550 gram weight, which is about where they can start to breed. So if he does breed, this will be actually an upgrade from the banana a fire pen. And like I said, there's probably five or six males I have to replace. This one here is kind of a little bit of a bummer. This is actually a vanilla red stripe and uh, it bred great last year and literally not even one copulation this year. So I'm going to replace it with the same red stripe gene, but I'm going to go pinstripe red stripe. I really wanted to get that vanilla in, but there's nothing I can really do. I need to get these animals bred. So I'll go ahead and replace it. Still produce a bunch of red stripe stuff, which is really cool. And then like I said, I've got maybe two or three other males I'll switch out. That'll start in the next couple days. Days. We'll start the new rotation and hopefully we get these females bred. Then we can see follicle growth really popping and stuff like that. And then we can always adjust. So again, that's what it's all about. It's adjusting on the fly. If you're just set and say, hey, I'm only going to breed that one male, you may not have a good breeding season. Always have a backup plan and try to be flexible with your plan. So that way you can have the most success possible. Oh, it is crazy how big Big Mac and of course Chicken Nugget, the female frill dragon that we produced a year ago have gotten. I mean, they are unbelievably cool. And again, you can see how unbelievably habituated and socialized they are too. I think it's really cool. You know, again, frill dragons are such amazing animals. If you can keep them tame, where they just kind of chill out on you like this, they're almost like a bearded dragon. And a lot of people think that frill dragons and bearded dragons are really closely related. They kind of look similar, but that's about it. Their care is different. Typically their temperament is different. A bearded will sit on your shoulder like this forever usually. Normally a frilly won't, but thankfully if you work with them like we did right from when they had, they'll actually get this docile, which makes them just incredible lizards. And Bella's enclosure turned out absolutely incredible, so we decided we're gonna go ahead and tackle Elvis's cage too, because again, it's a cool cage, but it definitely needs a little bit of a pop to it, so Jessica's gonna work on that now too. Well, I think that Elvis's enclosure, it looks pretty good. There's some plants over here, plants up here, over here. I think already Elvis is starting to destroy things a little bit. If I'm not mistaken, this was uh, somewhere that is uh, up over there that he ripped out already. He's down in the weeds, pushing these things down. This is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this plant back where it belongs, where he ripped it out before. So it's kind of like that. And I think what we're gonna have to do is actually silicone those in because obviously as he's moving around, he's a big bodied animal, he's gonna do it. But now he's just sitting in the water underneath the leaf. So uh, definitely a little more challenging trying to fixture out a, a large lizard's cage because they're just so heavy and destructive. But uh, it still looks better. I mean, we've got some color in here starting to look good. So, uh, but it's a work in progress, no doubt about that. 
pretty cute to crush Drogo like that. And those enclosures turned out really good. I'm really lucky to have Jess because she's like an artist when it comes to this stuff. If you like this video and you enjoy the kind of build site stuff, here's a playlist of us building the Reptarium. Hopefully you can click through a couple of those. It helps me a tremendous amount. Up here, could you subscribe to my podcast channel? On this side, help us get to 3 million. We're getting close, guys. Subscribe to this channel. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.